Good afternoon, everyone. Today, our parish community is gathered to celebrate Eucharist on this, the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. God's mercy is without end as we pray for our world, a world that can seem awfully lost and broken at times. Let us remember that the Lord Jesus calls each of us to forgive from our hearts those who sin against us. We also know this is a difficult message to hear and to live. And so may this liturgy serve as a sign of peace, forgiveness, and reconciliation. We worship as one body in Christ, and so I extend a warm welcome to all who are gathered here. As always, our time together is sacred, so I ask you to take a moment right now to make sure to silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. And thank you. And so this weekend, we continue the series that I'm calling Two Minutes More, this brief catechetical opportunity before Mass begins to help us to focus to remember some of the things that we do here during Mass and why we do them. Last week, I touched on the meaning of the word Eucharist, the title that we give to this celebration, a reminder that we gather in Thanksgiving, the true meaning of that word Eucharist. Today, I want to focus on the word the Mass and where that comes from and what it means for us. So, not all that long ago, but long ago for some of us, the main uh, language for the celebration of the Mass was Latin. And at the end of the Mass, the words that we hear, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord, in Latin, ite misa est, go, you are sent. And that word misa, you are sent, is the root then for the English word, the Mass. We are sent. Every time at the conclusion of Mass, we are sent out into the world. Keep that in mind, especially in the light of the message that we hear in the gospel today, a message of forgiveness and mercy. We are sent to maintain that chain of mercy and forgiveness. Together now, let us stand and share Christ's welcome with one another. Please join us singing our gathering song, Bring Forth the Kingdom, found in your worship aid. You are a salt for the earth, O oh people, salt for the kingdom of God. Share the flavor of life, O oh people, life in the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice, bring forth the city of God. You are a light on the hill, O people, light for the city of God. Shine so holy and bright, O people, shine for the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice, bring forth the city of God. You are a seed of the word, O people, bring forth the kingdom of God. Seeds of mercy and seeds of justice grow in the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice, bring forth the city of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather this day to celebrate the sacred mysteries of this Eucharist, Jesus shares with us a very challenging parable. It's a parable about forgiveness, or seen from the reverse, about what happens when we're filled with a lack of forgiveness. As we gather this day, to celebrate the sacred mysteries of this Eucharist, 
this Eucharist in which we find pardon and mercy, we acclaim Christ for these rich gifts that he shares with us so that we might share them with others. Lord Jesus, you died and you rose from the dead to save us from our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring us peace and reconciliation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you command us to love one another as you love us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And for this great gift of the Lord's mercy and forgiveness, together now we join to give glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. 
Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside, remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor, remember the Most High's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all my being, bless his name. Bless the Lord and forget not his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities and comforts your sorrows, redeems your life from destruction, and crowns you with his kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful, merciful, and gracious is our God, slow to anger, abounding in kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whenever, whenever we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. I give you a new covenant. 
commandment, says the Lord, love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. May the Lord's words be in our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. This is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For those of you who came in from the gathering space side of the church, you know that Patty Abend and I were out there in the gathering space greeting folks. And as folks were coming and going, Patty and I were chatting a little bit and talking about some favorite memories about family dinners. Those opportunities on Sundays just to spend time with one another, to share a meal together, to enjoy each other's company, maybe play a game of some kind. And it got me thinking You know, when we would gather as a family back those many years ago, Grandma and Grandpa would come over and we would sit there around the table. There were two favorite games that we liked to play. One was Uno. That was Grandma's favorite. The other was Dominoes. That was Grandpa's favorite. And so you get out your set of Dominoes, you know, the big tin that every family had at one time or another. You get all those Dominoes out. And you can play a game of Dominoes that's really about creating kind of a train where you're matching up the numbered spots on the dominoes, that's one way to do it. But when you're a seven-year-old kid, there's another way to play dominoes. You stand them all up. And you can create loops and straight lines and little bridges. Then the idea is you tip the first domino and and you watch it go. You can go on YouTube and see some amazing domino art. 
But we also know if things aren't lined up just right, and it stops, the chain is broken. That's what happens in the parable today. A chain of mercy gets broken. A chain of forgiveness gets stopped. All because one servant refuses to acknowledge the gift of forgiveness that he's received and share that gift with another. And the chain of mercy and forgiveness gets stopped just like a chain of dominoes. We know the basic story. This fellow must have been in debt up to his eyeballs and higher. And the master calls in the debt. And the servant says, I can't repay you. And the master threatens to sell the servant, the servant's wife, the servant's children, the servant's house, the servant's property, the whole thing in repayment of the debt. And the servant says, please have mercy on me and I will repay you. And so the master rethinks and forgives the entire debt. He doesn't just say, well, I'll give you more time. He says, I forgive the entire debt whatever that massive debt must have been, the master says it's forgiven. Imagine how this story would have been different had that servant then said, wow, my master has been so forgiving and so merciful to me, that is how I must be to others in my life. It's the old pay-it-forward principle in a way. Good begets good begets good. And yet this servant has no understanding of how merciful his master has been to him. And so he breaks the chain of what could have happened. This massive wave of mercy that could have moved out into that community into the lives of those people, into all of them, through all of them, for all of them, gets broken. Because the servant whose great debt was forgiven cannot find it in himself to be forgiving to another who owes a much smaller debt. Sirach in the first reading reminds us what good does it do any of us to be unforgiving toward another all that does is beget more unforgiveness I don't know about you but I don't want to live in a world of unforgiveness and it seems pretty clear that Jesus doesn't want us to live in a world of unforgiveness Yes, I get it. Sometimes being unforgiving feels really good for about 18 and a half seconds because we think we've got something over on somebody else. But all it does is poison us and all it does is it breaks the chain of the possibility of a wave of forgiveness moving out into a community into our families, into our world. Is a fleeting moment a feeling as though we have something over on someone worth breaking that chain? No. Jesus knows this. And I think we know this too. It's hard though. It's hard because sometimes in our human beings, in our everyday life and living, we like feeling superior to somebody else. 
by not sharing a forgiveness or a mercy with them. But then we have to step back and we have to remember the forgivenesses and the mercies that have been shared with us. Not just by our fellow humans, but by God. And therein lies one of the greatest challenges for us as Christians to come to terms with the fact that we have to work in such a way as that chain continues unbroken, that the wave can spread out into the world. When we gather here, every time we gather to celebrate the Eucharist, this action of thanksgiving, this gathering that we call the Mass, we gather here in order to be sent. We gather here in order to not stay here, but to go out there. We gather here to receive forgiveness. We gather here to hear forgiveness. And then we go out there to practice and to share it. And we do that because we are part of and we have received a massive gift of forgiveness. All Jesus asks us to do is to share that gift. Together now we stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. St. Paul reminds us that we do not live for ourselves, and neither do we die for ourselves. And so, with unselfish hearts, let us turn to God to pray for all those who are in need. And so, in peace, we pray, responding, Lord Hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may continue to lead the church in the way of God's love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the nations of the world will work together to bring peace and reconciliation to areas in the grip of war, terrorism, and conflict. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the flooding in Libya and the earthquake in Morocco, may God, who is mercy and love, bring all who have called upon him in this life to eternity with him in the next. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For safety and strength for all those who are working tirelessly to bring about safety and recovery in Morocco and Libya and in all parts of our world torn by natural disaster. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the physically, mentally, and emotionally challenged, all those who are burdened by sickness, and all who care for them, may experience the life of Christ within them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died, especially Frank Kane, Edward and Irene Zdlowski, 
Joel Chaudhry, the deceased members of the Pepperneck family, and all our beloved dead may soon find rest in God's heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our book, parish books of intercessions and the prayers we hold in our hearts, united with the Holy Spirit and our patrons, St. Mary and St. Anne, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of forgiveness and peace, hear the prayers of your people. Where there is hatred, inspire us to sow love. Where there is anger, let us bring your peace. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please, jo please join in singing Open My Eyes. Open my eyes, Lord, help me to see your face. Open my eyes, Lord, help me to see. Open my ears, Lord. Help me to hear your voice. Open my ears, Lord. Help me to hear. And the first shall be last, and our eyes are open, and we'll hear like never before. We'll see God's face in places we've never known. Open my heart, Lord. Help me to love like you. Open my heart, Lord. Help me to And so pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, 
your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, together we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Earl, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Anne, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Together now, we pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please join in singing, Let Us Be Bread. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord, broken and shared, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured. Let us be one in the Lord. I am the bread of life, broken for all. Eat now and hunger no more. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord. Broken and shared, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured. Let us be one in the Lord. You are my friends, if you keep my commands. No longer servants, but friends. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord, broken and shared, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured. Let us be one in the Lord. See how my people have nothing to eat. Give them the bread that is you. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord. Broken and shared, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured. Let us be one in the Lord. As God has loved me, so I have loved you. Go and live on in my love. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord, broken and shared, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured, let us be one in the Lord. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord, broken and shared, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured, let us be one in the Lord.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite everyone to be seated for just a couple moments. You may recall that back right toward the very beginning of summer, I asked everyone to provide a bunch of names for people who might be willing to serve in the parish pastoral council. By the time that part of the process was done, you guys submitted almost 150 names of folks. So it took some time to contact them and find out if they would be willing to serve if their name was drawn by lot. And so today we're going to do the first of those drawings. We're going to draw a member and an alternate for the new council year. So there are 36, 37 people whose names were submitted, folks who said, yes, we would serve if you drew our name, Father Dwight. And so I'm going to come over here for, for some assistance from two of my favorite young people here. Miss Haley, would you draw one of those pieces of paper out of there, please? Don't look, just pick one. Okay, and Elliot, would you draw another one, please? Thank you. All right, and so our first new member of the Parish Pastoral Council is Miss Elizabeth Seiler someone known to all of our school community. And if Mrs. Seiler is not able to serve, then Eunice Borelli will be her alternate. Thanks, you guys, for your help tonight. I really appreciate it. Good job. <laughs> and then we'll draw more names at each of the masses tomorrow. And then the new pastoral council year begins here in just a couple of weeks. As you make your way from church this evening, as always, missalettes go home with you. We do have additional missalettes available if any of you need them. They're on the table in the narthex area as you go. Offertory gifts can be placed in any of the white metal drop boxes located around the church. Bulletins will be available as you make your way from church. And I do have several things I'd like to draw your attention to today. The first is please be aware that the parish offices are going to be closed for the whole day this coming Tuesday, which is September the 19th, the staff has a diocesan meeting to attend all day that day. In the bulletin, you'll find details about the resumption of our parish religious formation programs that include family faith formation for families with children in grades K through six, the Kids of the Cross, our high school youth group, as well as preparation for First Reconciliation, First Eucharist, and for Confirmation. And for families with children who are going to be preparing for First Reconciliation, Remember that we do have a meeting tomorrow afternoon here at St. Mary. And I want to take a moment and speak especially then about the resumption of family faith formation. That's for families with school-aged children in grades K through 6 who aren't enrolled in our parish school. The church has always held that the family as the domestic church is the first teacher in the ways of the faith for their children. Family faith formation seeks to support that by offering a monthly gathering designed for both students and for parents. The process is led by Mary and John Gehrig, and Family Faith Formation meets the first Sunday of each month following the 9.30 Mass at our St. Anne location. Family Faith Formation seeks to provide catechesis and materials to support parents in helping them to raise their children in faith. This year's focus is going to be on the sacraments. Family Faith Formation resumes Sunday, October the 1st. More information is in the bulletin. Our discussion group for season two of the series The Chosen which helps to bring the Gospels to life, will begin at 7 p.m. this coming Thursday, September the 21st, here at our St. Mary location. And in the bulletin, you'll find an overview of parish finances from the fiscal year that ended June 30th, 2023, as well as the approved budget for 2023-2024. The budget for the year ahead is very tight, and so please take some time to read my column in conjunction with those reports as we make our way into this new financial year. Details about all of that and much more are in the bulletin. Let's stand now for the final blessing. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. We go in peace to love 
and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our singing for song, Sing of the Lord's Goodness. Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom. Come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come then, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Bring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. Praise Him with your singing, praise Him with the trumpet, praise God with the lute and harp. Praise Him with the cymbals, praise Him with your dancing, praise God till the end of days. Come then, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Bring out the Lord's glory, praise Him with your music, worship Him and bless His name. 